All right, guys, we're gonna go over a brand new 2023 Arrowake tunnel hole that we just finished up. Uh, sitting at 17.6 with a two foot rake and it's got a true seven foot bottom on it. Um, but we're gonna start off with the coatings. So talking a little bit about the powder coat, we've got an Illusion Royal Blue powder um, done by BCS Powder out of Aubrey, Texas. They did a fantastic job. Um, and so we pre-polished the gunnel and then laid the powder on top peeled the tape off and then went in with the second stage clear on top to bring the color through and seal in the polish section so you're never gonna have to repolish it, never have to worry about that look fading. Um, and then CH Lone Star actually helped us out with laying the 3M PPF on the side. So full PPF side and on the rudders and that's gonna help from you know running across branches, stumps and trees and keeping this powder looking fresh. Moving on to the C deck. Uh, Phoenix Marine Decking uh, scanned the boat and then Southern Marine and Cooler helped us design and choose the colors fitting to this blue. So we went with Camel on Cappuccino. Um, and I really like the way the tan and the blue turned out, um, especially since we're on the Red River. Um, if you have any lighter colors, that sand's gonna wanna stain and stick to it. Um, so the brown's gonna work out really well for this customer. Um, and so looking at the seat deck design, we wanted to provide gaps between all of the individual pieces so that we could bring that blue powder through and highlight it um, because it's just a fantastic look. Um, and as you can see, we've got the logo cut out in the front um, and then we killed it back by the cage at the engine stand so that anything coming off of that engine, uh, at some point you're gonna have oil, bugs, coolant, whatever have you, it's not gonna stain your sea deck and run it. Um, and then I wanna talk about the rudders a little bit. So we powder coated the rudders to match and then we went in and did a stencil design out of vinyl and we brought the camel and cappuccino colors through, color matched them and then everything is sealed off with 3M PPF. So when anything hits these rudders, you know, bugs, hopefully not any debris, but it's gonna keep this thing looking fresh for as long as possible. And at any point in time, we can pull the PPF off and rewrap it. Um, and so as far as the powder coat throughout the rest of the boat, we did the prop hubs, the overflow cans, valve covers, uh, the intake, and of course, all the seat buckets, seat pods. And all right, so moving on to the seats from the camel and cappuccino seat deck color, we matched that through the vinyl and brought out the royal blue throughout the stitching and the shadow on the logo. Um, and so I'm gonna pull off one of these seat covers so we can take a look at the back of it and how it's constructed. Um, so we build all these in-house, everything's cut on a vinyl table, all the pads are custom cut and shaped to fit these seat buckets. Um, and a really cool part about our design is these foam pads are interchangeable. So we can go with lighter density foam, we can go with a heavier density foam, depending on what kind of feel you want. Um, they are removable, so if they wear out over time, um, we shouldn't get any dry rot with this pad material, but if anything happens to it, we can swap it out without having to ditch this nice cover. Um, same thing with the bolsters, they slide in and out, um, so they are also replaceable. Um, and looking at the seat pod, we wrap the seat bucket in a full protective trim so that none of the abrasion from the seat ever rips through the vinyl. Um, and then everything goes on with snaps. So you've got two snaps on each side, two snaps bottom and top. And the way the design goes together is these are actually cut short and then we bring them together to pull the slack out of the seat. Um, so super easy to remove them, put them away for storage. Um, if you want to take them out while you're driving long distances, that's easy as well. Um, they're really simple to put on. All I do is flip the corners and kind of get the pads lined up where I like them. And I mean, I won't go through the full demonstration, but just flop it over like that, put the snaps back on, and you're right back to where you were. All right, we're going to go over the six different storage compartments as well as the maintenance hatch that's on this boat. Um, so the first one at the front of the deck is just general storage. You know, you can put life jackets, rope, basically whatever in there. Um, and then looking at the middle compartment to the rear compartment, this is a full open cavity so we can put full length fishing poles, tents, 
Um, basically, whatever you want to jam pack in there will fit. Um, and so talking about this rear door that's closest to the seat stand, um, this is where your battery access is. So we've got two anti-gravity batteries in this boat, one on each side. Um, super easy to access to put your plug-in charger or if you need to jump somebody else's boat while you're out here. Um, and cool thing about all these door jams is they're the same size, but they're specifically built for the K2 Summit 50 cooler. So we can take this door lid off, take the shock off, and the K250 cooler is gonna sit here around the top lip. And that's gonna give you a three inch little jump to your seat platform, as well as get the coolers off the deck so they're not in your way and there's no chance of them falling off. Um, so really cool use of that kind of compartment right there. Um, as far as the two seat boxes go, those are just general storage. Um, the only thing we've got in the top one is the fuse block, which of course you need access to while you're out here. Um, so full open, um, put whatever you want in there. Um, but I'll close this one because really cool part about this boat is we've got a 32 gallon live well. Um, and so it pulls from the back um, and also drains out the driver's side. So whenever you're in the water and you know you're gonna wanna fill it up, you just hit the switch. It's gonna fill up and automatically click off when it's full. And then whenever you're driving and you wanna drain it, all you have to do is hit the switch on the dash and you can watch it out the driver's side. So when it's done draining, you know that it's empty without opening that lid again. Um, and so we've got a divider in there. Um, and then one side is of course for your bait, one side's for your fish. And then the divider pulls out easily in case you catch a 50 pound cat and you need to put it in there. Um, and so we've got six 45 degree rod holders on the front of the boat that allow you to put fishing poles over the front and cast out. And then we've also got six 90 degree rod holders towards the rear of the boat on either side of the cage. And that's where you're gonna put your rods, of course, when you're driving. And then you can use little cable ties or whatever to fix them depending on how big or small the pole is. Um, and of course, just like every boat, we've got cup holders in the rake, cup holders in the middle console, and cup holders in the main console. Um, so no shortage of cup holders anywhere. Talking about our polished stainless rig in here, um, as you can see, every single piece of pipe on this boat is curved. Everything's hand mandrel bent around a jig. And then we use, of course, you know, different various pipe benders to get the design right and kind of all the bends right. Um, so everything comes to us pre-polished. We fit it, TIG weld it, and then everything is finished polished at the end to give it a nice consistent look. And realistically, from standing out this far, you shouldn't even be able to tell that anything's welded. It looks kind of like one mono piece. Um, so talking about the cage wire, um, we went with a tighter cage wire design. These are realistically like four by four squares. Um, all the cage wire is hand laid. Um, taken off, powder coated, and then we use all the stainless steel band ties to permanently attach it to the cage. Um, and so a big deal on these boats now is we've got to have front covers that cover up our belt. That way hair or any other objects don't get caught in that belt. Um, but of course we got to make it fancy just like everything else. So it's got some nice swoops, a little bit different design, and we tried to make it look like it's realistically not there, you know, not gonna be an eyesore. Um, so really happy with how that turned out. Um, and so we brought the stainless handles throughout all the seats to match the stainless rigging. And then of course we brought the stainless gunnel through to tie everything together and give it a consistent look. Um, and moving on to the back of the boat. So we brought the double bend look through a lot of different sections and basically all it is is a piece of pipe that's pre-bent and then bent back over itself to give it a nice swooping look um, without any sharp angles. Um, and you can see that throughout the back of the cage, throughout the front hoop on the cage, um, and a big part of it is the steering stick, which turns out really neat. On the back of the boat, we've got two eight-foot blade power poles that are controlled by either the handheld remote or Bluetooth. Um, and that's gonna be a shallow water anchor that allows you to put out anywhere from, of course, zero to eight foot. So on the main console, we've got the Simrad Go 9 that displays our GPS and allows us to keep track of miles per hour. 
Below that, we've got the custom rocker panel that allows us to control anything electronic that's on the boat. Um, towards the front, we've got the 50 inch radius single row LED light bar that goes along with the curved grass rake and allows us a wider range of view when we're driving at night. We've got a crate LT4 straight from GM that we went through and we did a BTR stage three cam. We did the valve train um, and then we topped it off with valve covers and a catch can. Um, as far as the blower goes, everything's stock. We're running stock PSI. Um, bottom end is stock. Uh, so this package should make anywhere between 7 and 720. Um, we did custom manifolds, so we've got 2 inch primaries down to 4 inch exhaust with a 12 inch resonator and then we just did a nice dump out the back. Um, stays nice and cool out of the way and it sounds fantastic. Alright, strapped to the LT4 we've got the ballistic counter rotator gearbox. It's a full billet assembly with hardened polished internal gears and we've got a 268 gear ratio front and back. And so looking at the props, Whirlwind hooked us up with twin seven and seven prop. Uh, they're 80 inches in diameter. And then one of my favorite aspects of the boat is the custom cut hub that we had done. And so we wanted to bring the double bends, the diamonds and the triangles throughout. Um, so that's a really nice touch towards the rear of the boat. All right, so everybody always asks, what does the tunnel design look like at the rear? So as you can see, the two outer tunnels don't touch the ground when we're on dry, and the only thing we're riding on is the center lower tunnel. That's gonna give us less surface area, less friction, and allow it make it easier to run over dry ground. With the tunnels, the idea behind it is that the water is channeled from front to back and pushed out from center to outside. That's going to generate lift under these outside two platforms, get the boat out of the water, and the higher we can get this boat out of the water, the faster we're going to be able to run, and it's going to allow us increased efficiency when running over choppy water.